Hello everybody, this is Derek from elventower.com. Very recently I released a Roll20 pack and this is a tutorial on how to use it on Photoshop. We're creating a new file. Um, we're just gonna make this file big, like 3000, 3K by 3K. We're leaving the resolution at 72 because that's what Roll20 actually uses. So we, we do that and we create this file. Now, in order for assets to show correctly, we have to go to Photoshop, Preferences, Guides, Grids, and Slices. And we have to make sure that the grid line is set at 140 pixels, only one subdivision. This is necessary. Click OK, and then we go to View. And make sure that the Snap option is uh, activated, and we go to Show, and we show the grid. Now, each square on the grid is 140 pixels and done like this. Like this is my list of assets uh, on Finder. If you bought my pack or got it from Patreon, you have these files. And now if we drop them to Photoshop, they're going to like auto snap to the grid and everything's going to work perfectly. Um, you see that the part that snaps is actually the interior of the room like the actual squares where we play D&D &D or whatever game you play. Uh, but the walls, they're outside the, outside the grid. That's why the, the number of squares in each room don't exactly match the, the scale in the, in the file name. But when you drop it to Photoshop, it works perfectly. And now when you, uh, when you import something and you want to uh, rotate it, all you have to do is click uh, Command T or just add the a 90 here in where it says angle to rotate it. Usually uh, rotations of just 90 or 180 are going to be enough for what we're doing in Photoshop. Now I'm adding another room. Now what happens here is because I'm adding the room after the hallway, um, the wall of the room uh, is showing on top of the hallway and we don't want that so what we do is uh, I'm, I'm just like fixing the position of this room we click the hallway file and on the right side where we have the layer the layers menu we just drag that uh, we drag that layer to the top so it's on top of the room and then I'm just adding more hallways. Um, my room uh, is not exactly snapped to the grid. Okay, now it's perfect now. I'm just gonna add now a double corner file. No, I was looking for a small one. You see, all the files are properly tagged. I'm just going, you can like, you can rotate it like this. Or you can just add the number. Like I know it's 180 degrees, so it's perfectly snapped to the grid. You could rotate it uh, in fractions, uh, but then map probably wouldn't look very coherent if some of the angles were uh, different than others. Now again, we have the room problem where it's on top of the hallway. Uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna like click the, the layer and drag it to the top. Now I'm gonna add one of those uh, hallway files. Have to rotate it. No, not this one. I'm, I'm just gonna add a room to the left and then we're gonna add a boss room uh, below again here we have to click on the layer and then drag it to the top so it's uh, so it shows correctly I'm thinking yeah hallway a hallway like this is gonna be exactly what we need now we're probably gonna have a problem that the big room is not going to fit 
uh, in the document we created. So you can see uh, there's no room for it. So we're gonna have to make this document bigger. Uh, I'm just gonna drop this file uh, right where it is right now. Uh, if you want to make the document bigger, you have to go to uh, menu image and then you have to go to image size. No, forget that, wrong option. That's canvas size and it's the height where we're making it bigger to 4,000. Click OK and we have more room. Now again, I'll have to click the layer file for the, for the hallway and drag it to the top. Just like that. That's it, we have our room, uh, our dungeon, I mean. If we remove the grid, we can see that it looks pretty good as it is right now. Now, in my pack, there is a folder with stuff. It comes with an assortment of boxes, jars, rocks, and tables, different things you can add to the dungeon. I'll start with this altar, it's a kind of altar statue I'm adding to the boss room and then some some more smaller stuff uh, just to furnish it I'm just gonna add some like barrels right here some boxes too the actual building of the um, I mean making the dungeon is actually the fast part because all the different tiles and rooms they all snap to the grid pretty easily uh, but furnishing the rooms with all the small stuff usually takes more time uh, in this pack uh, it also contains this torchlight it's like a torch sconce um, because of the transparency it actually works like a a lightning device looks pretty good in my opinion um, don't know if it's particularly useful for roll 20 since I'm aware it uh, includes some dynamic uh, dynamic lighting options so probably not not so not so clever there, but it is there in the pack in case you're not using this for Roll20, uh, but rather um, creating a dungeon for a, um, for a local game. It also includes rocks, like just rubble. It includes some, uh, a, an assortment of tables with different stuff. Um, in the future, I will I will release more packs like this, but they're they're all gonna work like this. So this tutorial will be good for uh, for anything I release in the future. Currently, uh, my goal is to release a pack uh, similar to this one um, at least once a month. That's my goal for now. Let's just add something to the first room. It's a table with a uh, with a crystal ball. Now just some extra stuff. Um, by the way, the background uh, on, in Photoshop is white by default. You can uh, bucket fill it to any other color you want. Uh, be it probably black would be the uh, better option. Now we have the f uh, our finished dungeon. Um, the document is too big, so if we want if we want to make this uh, slightly smaller, like just what we need, we click on the marquee tool and select the area we actually want. And after doing that, we're going to go to uh, menu, image, and then crop. So it's exactly the size we need. Uh, if we go to the layer menu, we can see that the, uh, the bottom most the bottom most layer is the background. We can turn it on and off. Uh, turning it off would probably be useful, so we export this as a PNG for Roll20. If we want to export, we go to File, Export, Export As. It's going to give us some options. Um, 
here we can choose between uh, a JPEG file or a PNG. If we're using a black or white background, a, a JPEG is going to be better. And here it shows you the estimated final size, 2.1 megabytes, pretty small for a dungeon, so it's pretty good. If we turn off the background and we want a, a file with transparency, we have to export it as a PNG file. Uh, the file is going to be slightly bigger. As you can see, it's a 3.7 megabytes. And if we export it like this, it's going to be instantly useful in Roll20 or other uh, VTT environments. So thank you very much, everybody. This is uh, Derek from elventower.com. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.